Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, doing something a little different today. I am at my son's house and his Jeep is not starting. So you guys have found this video. This is gonna be a no crank uh, diagnostic video on a Jeep. Um, and it doesn't really matter what year, make or model the car is. The fundamentals are the same when you have a no crank. Um, we did do a little preliminary stuff. I had Caleb doing some testing with a test light and we believe we have a wiring problem. So this will make for a really nice, quick testing video that everyone needs to know how to do, again, regardless of the car. I hear Rocky. It's the guard dog. That <laughs> 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 oh, hurt me. You hurt me. Your claws. <laughs> Great. <laughs> was she not awake yet? No, she was not. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my fault. Yeah. Ah, it's Hippo. Hi, Hippo. It's Rock. It's Rocky's buddy Hippo. Hi, Hippo. Wait, you have to let Caleb hold her so he can. She can be on film. <laughs> you don't want to be on film. Not dressed like this. <laughs> I don't want to be on film either. But <laughs> hey, Rocky just. What are you up. doing? Did Rocky wake you up? Did Rocky wake you up? Look how cute you are. Do you smell? Yeah, she stinks. Are you poopy? <laughs> Are you poopy? <gasps> oh, we bean. She got crazy here today. Check out her Star Wars jammies. Oh, they're awesome. We got like all the characters. I like a little Darth Vader right there. <laughs> I'll still use it somehow. Did yeah. you get any footage of the test light? I did. A little bit. And so do we want to wait? What I didn't expect to see. So then I just stopped filming and. Well, you. that's when you called me and and yeah. we said we have a voltage drop. Yeah, so it's definitely a, a wiring issue to the uh, starter because the starter the heavy is, post, right? Yes. So let's insert Caleb's footage here. Yeah. All right. So we got the test light connected to battery ground with a jumper wire. All right. So you can see the starter right there. So first we're gonna just put the test light on the uh, housing, make sure we have a ground. All right, go ahead, crank it. All right, so we don't wanna see that light. All right, next we're gonna connect to the uh, main, what is it, the load? Sure, and we wanna see that stay lit during cranking. Go ahead, crank it. Let off. Okay, that's not good. Now we'll see if he actually did it right. Maybe. It might just need a starter. I hope it's a wiring problem. It'll make for a nice quick video. Yeah. Where's the test light at? It's in my toolbox. Yeah, remember we needed that and I was really angry at you? Yeah, I cut that out in one of our previous videos. He needed his test light and I had it here. Yeah, oh. these terminals look awful and we may have a problem here. I don't want to touch them because I want to get a good test down at the starter. Um, but the starter itself, um, the wire to the right is the load that goes to the starter motor itself. That's after the solenoid engages. That's not the one we want to uh, test. For this, we want to test the ones that are underneath this little L-shaped housing. Uh, so there's a heavy gauge battery positive post and a small gauge S post. We're probably gonna hit that from underneath. Something else you can try to do in um, certain circumstances, especially when you're stuck, is the tap test. And I realize the tap test with newer starters that have permanent magnet um, housings uh, can, can damage the magnet. So you don't wanna tap hard, but here's a little clip of us bailing my mom out uh, using oh, yeah. the tap test at uh, Trax Farm, which is near my house. What are you doing, mom? My car died. <laughs> All right, without tools, you're in a situation like this, you know, some light tapping on the starter would be good. Hold it in the crank position. And so you can see with the result of that, right, Caleb, that uh, sometimes the tap test is good. We yeah. did the tap we test, tried it. it didn't work. No. So we're not gonna revisit the tap test. Times. And everyone just got to see what the tap test does. Yep. 
So um, we're going after some quick voltage checks and all you need guys is a just a $20 test light. You don't wanna use an LED test light for this. It needs to at least be some type of current carrying test light and this one uh, carries about 200 milliamps. It's a regular incandescent style bulb. That is the recommended uh, test light for troubleshooting, not, not LED test lights. So this is gonna be a little bit difficult because I have to be cameraman and test guy while Caleb's cranking it. So I'm gonna go battery negative and you do have a jumper wire, which helps. Look at me, I'm doing something that's not editing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, of course, this is my heavy post right here. And that one's, this one's hot all the time, as you can see, uh, but that's not a good enough test. You want to check that one when you're cranking. And then the other post, I think it's this one. I don't have my glasses on. That looks like my S post. And then this guy over here, this one doesn't get hot until the solenoid um, engages. So that's the one that goes to the motor itself. I'm not worried about him right now. We're gonna start with the heavy gauge one right here. And one of the things too, is we did hear this starter clicking. So, um, but let's, actually I wanna go to the post of this. There's a reason I wanna go to the post and not the nut. So post, um, and even though it's hot all the time, you can't say, hey, that's a good test. It's not, there's no current flow. So um, go ahead and crank that, Caleb. All right, ready? Yep. Cranking. Nice. Perfect example. Perfect example of a voltage drop. You hear how heavy the solenoid was, the click? Um, that's really irrelevant for this. The fact that that light goes out. Nice job, by the way, Caleb, because that's exactly what you told me. I told you. The fact that this light goes out when we're cranking tells us our voltage drop is occurring on the heavy gauge wire. This does not need a starter. Um, just to show you guys, stay there, one more crank. This is the S post. This one should be hot only when cranking. So go ahead and crank it. Okay, you see how that one lit? And then again, the heavy posts, a lot of people would say, hey, that's hot all the time, so that's good. It's not, crank it again. Huge voltage drop, huge voltage drop. And then if there's one other check too, not in our case because we found our problem, but the housing itself, you just wanna go on the starter housing and then you'd hit the key and make sure that light does not light on the housing uh, to check your ground. If that light would light when you're cranking on the ground, on the housing, then you have a bad block ground. And that happens too. I'll have Caleb pull in what a bad block ground looks like here on this test. Show you one more test on this block using a test light. Got test light connected to battery negative. See when I touch positive test light lights. Go to the block. Of course the test light's not gonna light, right? Go ahead and crank it. Crank it. All right, good. You see the block is lit. That's going battery negative to the block. That test light is lighting. Go ahead and let off the crank position. It's still lit even with the key in the on position. That test light's still lit. Again, bad block ground. So we're chasing our heavy gauge circuit. And the reason I went to the post is I wanted to see what the starter motor is seeing. Now the next step is I'm gonna go to the nut because we could have our problem right here. Go ahead and crank it again, Caleb. Nope, okay. And it's bad right there on the nut as well. Now I'm gonna try to go to the eyelet because we could have a problem between the eyelet and the, and the nut. So I'm on the eyelet now. Okay, crank it. Nice, see how the eyelet stays lit? Go ahead, crank it again. Okay, so it's it's lit on the eyelet and never shuts off. That means our voltage drop is right here, literally right here. Nice. Go ahead, crank it. That's awesome. Go ahead, crank it. Crank it. All right, so literally all we need to do 
um, is take that nut off and clean it up and tighten it back up and this thing's gonna start. Um, this, is, this is classic voltage drop stuff here, Caleb. Love it, love it, love it. If we have a wrench that fits that, me just snugging that bolt up right now would be enough for us to get this going. What a great case study this is. And this is what people love to throw parts at cars and starting systems are so simple and this applies to everything. It doesn't matter if it's a 2020 model year car that has the stop and go starting. It's still the same circuitry, same tests even though this is a 96 Jeep. Okay guys, so this is risky. I'm not disconnecting the battery, but I'm being careful not to touch anything else. All I'm doing is snugging this just, just a little bit. Oh, that's loose too. Okay, and that should be enough. You think it'll start? I think it'll start now. So now people are gonna wanna see the result of that test after, of course, the engine's gonna crank, but I'm gonna show it real quick. I'm just gonna put the test light back on there to show everyone yeah. that that light should stay lit yeah. while you're cranking. And yeah. so what we'll do to keep the car from starting is I'm gonna disconnect your ignition coil. Mm -hmm. And then, that way it cranks and doesn't start while I'm under there. I was just saying from the start when I was checking it and realized that it wasn't like a bad starter. Right, we are just going to be parts me, changers. He yep. said if I snug that up, it should, like it could start. Um, but I didn't do it because we wanted to wait to film it. Hell yeah, this is so. one This is one to capture that everyone needs to see. Yeah, super helpful. Super easy to do too. Starting systems, there's no reason to throw a starter at a car. Yeah. Do these basic I checks. I too because I was a parts changer yeah, and no I wanted doubt. to drive my car. Yeah, I mean we're like, stuck in the driveway, I get it. Well, I, I wanted to replace it because I could hear it clicking and we were smacking on it and it wasn't working. Yep. I'm like, well I hear it clicking so yep. I know it's getting what it needs. Classic, it heavy gauge voltage drop. And and that's why too, again, emphasis on the stud. You go on the stud for an accurate measurement. I'm pretty sure I went on the stud when I did You it. did, uh, cause I told you to. And nice. people will go on the eyelet. If we would have stayed on the eyelet, we would have put a starter in this yep. and you would have fixed it. You would have never known that yeah, it was the bad was call bad. because your test light wasn't in the right spot. Yeah. And just right. loosening the nut and putting it back on is your fix. Anyway, all right. Let's do it. On the stud. Go ahead, crank it. Okay. You notice the light dimmed. That's totally normal because you got, you know, 200 amps, 150 amp average, honestly a 500 amp surge on initial crank. Um, so that light dimming there is fine, but that's, that's what you want to see. You never want to see that light go out here. One more time. Okay. And then final check again. This would be on your ground. This is just really anywhere, anywhere on the housing you can do this, right? And you don't want that light to light. If it would light here, it would never crank, but go ahead, crank it. Okay. And again, Caleb, pull this clip in. Uh, what you guys are seeing here is a loaded ground test. My test light's still connected to battery ground in this. And you can see when we crank this engine over, um, that that light is lighting going to battery ground. So that's your bad block ground scenario. Easy checks all done with a test light. Well, cool. I'm glad we didn't do anything off camera. This has been sitting here for what? Two months? Not so, like a, month. a month and a half maybe. And that was all in the name of getting you guys a good video. That's why this car has been yeah, sitting here. Driving that car, <laughs> which we're trying to sell to my older brother. Yeah. So. Sweet man, good job, Caleb, on your tests. Nice job. Well, we'll see once you actually see the footage. You're gonna be like, you're a moron. You weren't doing anything. No way, you were. <laughs> uh, you clearly told me that that's what this was doing. And guys, special thanks. Hold on one second. We're, we're wearing matching t-shirts. Oh, we are too, huh? <laughs> These are like, were they advertised for like man boobs or something like yeah, that? Well, I mean. Beer belly? I Yeah, I just got them. It hides the beer belly. 
anyway yeah <laughs> they're nice <laughs> guys we just want to thank you so much for um enabling us to do what we do yep. and uh hope you guys enjoyed the special footage of caleb and his family and and uh we have you guys to thank for all of this so absolutely uh we are blessed by each and every one of you i hope you guys learned something from this one and we'll see you next time cool <laughs> <laughs> We're teaching her to be a screamo uh, band lead singer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a 96 Jeep Cherokee. Customer complaint being me is that it doesn't start. I can go to crank it. And it doesn't start. So... So we're gonna do three quick checks on my starter and this is my uh, right hand man. She's gonna crank it over for me uh, whenever I tell her to. Say hi, Ellie. Ellie, say hi.